Um, action. Hello! Jay Ashcroft here from 432 Media. We're with a new client. They're called Mitchell Contracting, and they're demoing right now, and they are also preparing for some footings that are going to be put in. I'm shooting photo, I'm shooting video, and I'm getting as much content as I can for them. So as far as my setup goes, I have a 7 s 3 with a 16 to 35 a little variable ND on top, a little Sennheiser shotgun mic. I also have a 70 to 200 and I'm, I'm just switching back and forth between those two. I'm shooting handheld. I'm really finding that there's great in-body stabilization and I want these sequences to be kind of fast paced, kind of kind of edgy and choppy and jumpy, 30 seconds to a minute tops, and there's just gonna be lots lots of energy in them. So I'm okay with a little bit of that camera movement. Later on in the day before I take off, I'm, I'm probably gonna throw the camera on the gimbal, nice wide, and I'm gonna get some process shots just of the area they're working on. That's really important for that final video where we're gonna put that together and show the whole process start to finish. If you're ever shooting something like this, it's good to shoot through objects just to add you know, a little bit of extra flair to it, make it look a little more interesting. Also, crank that shutter speed up if there's movement and you can freeze the water droplets. If you are working with a client who does dirty jobs, I would highly recommend getting yourself a work in. Sick table, man. In an ideal world, I have a A7S III and then maybe something like an FX3 for when I'm filming video. Because when I'm doing photo, I've got two, two bodies going. I'll have like a telephoto and a wide. And I, I love having that, that zoom variability because when I'm shooting a sequence video-wise, I need stuff to cut in between, right? So I'll get really tight with the telly at maybe 200 millimeters and I'll back up to 70 and get like a shot of that. And then I'll run over here to the table, flop up my lens and I'll throw on a 16 mil and get like really tight on it just to have that movement and that variety in the shot. It isn't ideal that I gotta stick back and forth between camera bodies, but it's good to always be thinking about that edit. So think about how you're gonna cut the footage together so you can make a really quick, concise reel that's like 30 seconds to the point. It's entertaining, it's interesting, and it's not just, you know, the grandma shot where it's just, you know, one focal length, right?
thank you for watching. That's it. The client is super stoked with what they got there. They got those two videos. They got two more videos from a separate day of shooting on that same project. And they got just over 200 photos between those two days as well. If you have any questions about this video, then let me know down in the comments. If you want to know about my process with editing this job or even how I got this client and kind of the process start to finish working with them and let me know and we'll see if I can put something together. Thanks again for watching. Like, subscribe, all the things. See you next time. Do you see that? It's flickering. <laughs>